Greetings everyone. Okay, so today um, we're going to go through lesson 2. We've already gone through lesson 1 and as we've gone through lesson 1, I'm really just saying this out there. It's a very high recommendation that you watch lesson 1 first because obviously that will help you to understand what we're going to go through in lesson 2. And lesson 1, I would say, is one of the lessons that if you don't go through, you will not be able to fully understand the magnitude of what we have to go through for the rest of these series based upon how to study the Bible. So it's recommended that before you watch lesson 2 which is this one, please watch lesson 1. Okay so with that said, we're going to go to lesson 2 right now and lesson 2 is simply Bible version. Now this isn't going to be a very long lesson per se because I want to show you some information regarding the use of different Bible versions, especially when it comes to studying the Bible. Um, I'm sure that you probably know that there's many versions out there, there's probably over 10 versions I'll probably say, but based upon this fact we need to ask ourselves this question, when it comes to studying the Bible, what is the safest version to use? Is there a safest version to use? We're going to see that in this lesson, lesson 2, Bible versions. Now just to make things a bit easier, right off the outset I'm just going to tell you what Bible version I use when it comes to studying the Bible. I use what's known as the King James Version. Now the reason why I use the King James Version is because it comes from what's known as the Texas Receptus and the Texas Receptus is basically comes from the original language. So it's translated directly from the Hebrew as well as from the Greek as the Bible was written in Hebrew and Greek. Whereas the other Bible versions, um, which I'm sure you're probably all familiar with, those other versions are more on, on the case of being used to fit the person's understanding. So there may be words taken out here, so in order for the, the, the reader to understand what the Bible is actually saying. Now though that may be a justifiable reason because people do want to understand what the Bible is saying and it's fair enough. But at the same time, I did wonder to myself, could there be a danger in this? I remember reading something in the book of Revelation, which I'm going to share right now. I want you to notice the principle of what is being said in this book, Revelation. But rather, even though I know it's not talking about the book Revelation, I know that the principle can apply throughout the whole Bible. Notice what it says in the book of Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22 verse 18 and 19 says, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19 says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So obviously what we're gathering here is that God is not somebody who takes um, a tamper of his word lightly. He, he takes it very seriously. So obviously with that said, and obviously I know it's not talking about the Bible itself, it's talking about the book of Revelation, I understand the principle that if you change anything in the Bible, it obviously affects the, you know, the person, it affects the whole doctrine, it affects the teachings. Now personally, I'm not going to go through all the histories about how the Bible came to be in the sense of how did the King James Version come about, how did NIV, King, New King James, etc. I'm not here to kind of talk about those things, I'm actually here to just emphasize how we can study the Bible even with other Bible versions and the safest version to use. But if you want to know about how you know the Bibles came to be and the difference between all the other Bibles, I'm going to leave the link in the description box below because it will show you some very good reasonable resources that will help you aid in this particular section of the lesson. Now based upon what I read in the book of Revelation chapter 22 about tampering with God's words, I can actually see certain versions that actually tamper with God's words. I'm going to use some examples and let's go through them and we're going to see clearly how things have been tampered with. Notice. So starting with the King James Version of the Bible, it clearly says in Luke chapter 4 verse 4, it says this, And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. However, I want you to notice the NIV version, which is what we're going to use as an example of different Bible versions. So it says in Luke chapter 4 verse 4 in the NIV version, Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. Now, what's removed? We can see the phrase, But by every word of God. 
Now, is it important that we don't live on bread alone but by every word of God? Well, of course, but this part of the verse has been removed. All right, so that's one example. I want to show you another example, and this example is going to be in the book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. Notice. Matthew chapter 18, verse 11 says, For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. But now, when I turn to the same verse in the NIV version of the Bible, it says the following. That's right, it doesn't say anything. So, I mean, just based upon this example, this is just an example of many. Um, I've actually looked into these things and I've seen that there are many, many verses in the Bible that have actually been removed completely out of the NIV version. So, obviously, there's a bit of a temperation actually going on. If that's, I don't know if temperation is a word, but anyway, you know what I mean. Now, even when it comes to versions that are actually closer to the King James Version, there is even a bit of tampering going on as well. And the example I'm going to use regarding that is the new King James Version. Now, with the example that I'm going to use here, um, I want to set the record straight, and I'm sure probably many of you have come to understand that this is what I believe. Um, based upon what I've studied in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there is no such thing as a place called hell, in the sense of there's no place where, you know in the Greeks where they believed in eternal torment with Hades and all these things, there is no place in the Bible where it emphasizes that there's a location called hell where everybody just burns it, or the wicked people burn it. Alright, just, just setting that as a record because what I want to do is use the example of the New King James Version with the King James Version. So with this example, I'm going to go to 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 in the King James Version which says this, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now that's the King James Version, I want you to notice carefully what the New King James Version actually says. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Do you see the difference here friends? Where one version, the King James Version in this case, says that the wicked are reserved unto the day of judgment, the New King James is actually saying that the wicked are reserved under punishment unto the day of judgment. So in other words, the wicked are being reserved to be punished on the day of judgment, whereas with the New King James Version, the wicked are being punished and to be reserved unto the day of judgment. Now, are the wicked actually being punished right now? No. The Bible is very clear when you look at Genesis to Revelation that the wicked are reserved to be punished on the day of judgment. How do people obviously get to that place when it comes towards understanding the wrong doctrines? It's based upon, well obviously not studying the Bible, but also making sure you understand what Bible you're actually using. So again, my highest recommendation when it comes to studying the Bible, because of the Texas receptors being used for the new, for the King James, it is the King James Version which is highly recommended to be used when it comes to studying the Bible. But now the question that comes to mind is, well what about using other Bible versions? Is are, are other Bible versions safe to use in this case? Well I can only speak for myself in this because when it comes to using other versions, I often use it as a means of opening up the scriptures. Now what do I mean by that? Well basically what I mean is this. All the Bible versions are not necessarily bad to use. I'm just talking about it under the context of studying the Bible. So when it comes towards reading a verse or you know understanding a Bible verse, what I often do is I look at the other Bible versions to maybe see if they could open it up a bit more. But before even going down that route, the first, the very first thing I do is go through what we did in lesson one, which was the concordance. As you can see in this clip, um, we went through in lesson one. We can obviously see that you know, as you do use the actual words to open up the the meaning in the word, you actually get a broader understanding of the verse itself. So therefore, what I often do is use the concordance to open up you know, open up certain words that will obviously help me understand the verse a lot more. But obviously when it comes towards, you know, the way things are written as well, I want to use an example that an evangelist friend actually showed me, and this actually showed how, you know, sometimes it's good to use other versions in the context of what we are actually talking about. So here's an example, I'm going to read in Job chapter 31 verse 1 which says this, I made a covenant with mine eyes why then should I look upon a maid? Now obviously just on the outset, as you're reading this first, people might just think, okay, so he's made a covenant with his eyes, and then why should he look upon a maid? But it's not really emphasizing why he shouldn't look upon a maid. 
Now if you notice this other version it says this, I have made an agreement with my eyes, then how can I look with lust at a virgin? So obviously this version is actually opening up what the previous version, the King James Version actually said. But now if you look at this version, the next one that I'm going to show you, notice what it actually says. I made an agreement with my eyes not to look at a young woman in a way that would make me want her. Okay, so as you look at these versions, you're obviously now seeing an opening up of what it was trying to say in the King James Version. Now, obviously, when I look at these things, I understand to myself, all right, well, this is what Job is actually saying, and these versions have actually helped me understand it a bit more. And obviously, when that happens, you obviously may, you know, come, come up with other verses which actually support what Job is actually saying. And one of the verses that comes to mind is in the book of Matthew, where Jesus says, if you look upon a woman with lust, then you have already committed adultery in your heart. Okay, so I hope that that actually makes sense when it comes towards using Bible versions. Again, just to emphasize so there's no confusion, when it comes to using Bible versions, it's not safe to use it as a Bible study. But when it comes to using Bible versions, it could be used in order to open up what the verse is actually saying. But the safest route to go through first is to use the concordance. Okay friends, so that actually concludes the Bible version section. It wasn't too long as I mentioned, but um, I would say give it a try. Um, see what you can do. Um, as you're coming up to study the Bible, obviously use a concordance first and you know, just to kind of make things a bit more opened up, you know, you can use other versions to possibly open up what the actual scripture is saying. Alright, so um, if any other questions that you have, leave it in the comments box below. And um, yeah, I will see you in the third lesson and that will be coming out hopefully very soon i know this one took a bit of time to, to put together but um, at the same time i hope that these lessons are helping you as you study the bible for yourself all right see you in lesson three god bless bye for now